Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the final lecture in this NPTEL course on nonlinear control. So um, we had we were looking at uh, sliding mode control, and we sort of uh, looked at last time a way for chattering attenuation, right? And after that, we also we started to discuss the notion of equivalent control, right? What is equivalent control? It is basically the control that you obtain from the fact that your sliding variable goes to zero in spite of the disturbance beyond a certain time, right? Uh, so this is a very important and interesting idea because this equivalent control is obviously not an implementable control and this is the actual control. But the fact is the actual control in a time average sense must go to the equivalent control Otherwise, there's no way that the states would remain, the system would remain on the sliding surface, right? So, uh, so uh, therefore, an estimate for the equivalent control is simply a filtered, uh, a low pass filtering of the signum function here, and that's what is implemented here. And essentially, now what we can say is that uh, from here you can see that if you simply match and uh, this guy with this guy yeah if you see as you can imagine this has to match right otherwise there is no way you, you understand there is no way that uh, sliding ideal sliding happens right and therefore once you match these two you understand that this um, this quantity and this quantity have to be the same right so therefore what we are essentially claiming is that a very good estimate for f is uh, rho low pass filter of signum of sigma right uh, for t greater than or equal to tr right and you understand this becomes a very nice way of estimating not just disturbance but any derivative for that matter right because where was the disturbance the disturbance was actually in x2 dot right so even if there was no notion of control yeah even if there was no notion of control uh, you could um, in fact uh, compute the derivative using this idea i mean because of uh, lack of time uh, we are not going to get into that but this is very uh, closely connected to the notion of a sliding mode differentiator yeah is a very nice way of um, doing a uh, obtaining a differential or in fact obtaining any disturbance signal yeah so what have we done we've taken simply the signum of the uh, this uh, sliding mode variable and we are uh, scaling it by this row uh, you know this row which is obviously greater than l and all of that right we've already designed that um, and so we are simply scaling by rho this low pass filter version of signum of sigma and we are saying that this is a great estimate for any disturbance right and that's great yeah because that is what uh, we will uh, sort of use um, in trying to uh, look at the notion of a super twisting control yeah because until now you have seen that um, the chattering is not still completely gone okay so what is this super twisting control right so you see that even though the chattering was gone in the in the first level in the second level that is even though the chattering was uh, less because we use an integral control for example in this chattering attenuation kind of idea uh, still there was there is going to be chattering right at the next level so it's not like you're going to completely get rid of this but super twisting controls are a uh, sort of 
quite an amazing way of getting um, rather uh, smooth controls right are, are, are a very good way of getting um, rather smooth controls okay so so let's uh, sort of look at what is the super twisting control so what's the idea here i'm going to go back to the original treatment here if you see what did we do we had this half sigma squared as our v right and then we uh, constructed our control as minus rho signum sigma yeah that i mean the v is already cancelled the cx2 and all that so we are not worried about that anymore but we've constructed the v as minus rho signum sigma right so now we do something slightly different right and that's what is the title here it's a super twisting control and this is um uh, due to some really really interesting results from utkin etc right? um so so what is the super twisting control you remember that we had uh, sigma as uh, x2 plus cx1 and we had v as one half sigma squared right and of course you had you know what was x1 and x2 so if you look at v dot we had taken it it is sigma sigma dot which is x2 x2 dot which is u plus f plus cx2 i am deliberately not writing the arguments of f just to save some space right and what did we do we said that uh, we will prescribe u as minus cx2 plus a new control v and so this becomes sigma times v plus f and this is the point when we had prescribed v s minus rho signum of sigma right now this is where we prescribe a different control right we say that our v is not going to be um, minus rho signum sigma but it is going to be minus rho uh, sigma to the power half signum sigma okay all right minus rho sigma to the power half signum sigma right now um let's let's consider for a moment uh, say there is no difference no disturbance at all say f is in fact zero then what happens is that v dot becomes minus rho sigma to the power half times sigma signum sigma which is basically this is just absolute value of sigma so this is just minus rho sigma to the power 3 by 2 say right? right this is what you have this is minus rho sigma to the power 3 by 2 okay now um so let's see so right right um, so I'm just trying to see how we can do this so I want to write this in terms of the V itself right and so that's my uh, primary uh, question right so this is actually going to be um, if yeah so so this is implies uh, Sigma is somehow equal to square root of twice v is what i get from here and if i substitute it here right the absolute value of sigma is square root of 2v if i substitute it here i will get minus rho um 2 to the power half uh, so 2 to the power 3 fourth times v to the power 3 fourth right okay great so so it doesn't matter what i choose my row as it's evident that this is less than one so implies have finite time convergence okay have finite time convergence so it's not like we've done any achieved anything new in terms of the convergence the convergence is still finite time convergence for the variable sigma the sliding variable sigma however 
something really cool has happened right my control has changed yeah let's not worry about you let's just look at v because um, u is uh, just a smooth term along with a v now earlier the control was minus rho signum of sigma so what was the earlier control going to look at look like um if i try to plot it uh, let's see uh, let me take a different color if right the earlier control was depending on the uh, sign of sigma right it was going to jump between the uh, yeah the earlier control could would be something like this right depending on the sign of sigma it would look something like this right so this is the old control yeah but the super twisting control is rather nice it is not just signum of sigma it is signum of sigma multiplied by the square root of sigma and this makes it rather nice and uh, continuous yeah so this is rather cool yeah why the control is not going to be these jumps anymore at all because even if sigma becomes here what was happening was even if sigma became slightly positive you had this guy if it became slightly negative you had this guy it's just moving from this to this this to this this to this it was like a bang bang here the movement is much more smooth if it's slightly positive then you only have a slightly up curve slightly negative slightly up and so on and so forth right so this you will have as the super twisting control now the only problem is when there is actually the disturbance right it is not really cancelling the disturbance term if you notice the whole purpose of rho signum sigma was it was dominating the disturbance term this guy is not doing that and so what do we propose we propose that uh, so if you look at what happens in the presence of disturbance is that the sigma dot dynamics right starts to look like um, minus rho sigma to the power half signum sigma uh, because and and because the cx2 is already cancelled the sigma dot will just be this plus the disturbance yeah so you see the disturbance is not really compensated okay not really compensated so in the presence of disturbance you will not get convergence to the sliding surface right? so what do we do we actually use the idea of this estimator right, right? what is it we of course we have this assumption that um, f dot is uh, also less than equal to some l bar right and then um, we construct our v as minus rho signum sigma plus a variable w where the w is now an estimator right where the w is now an estimator of f right okay so w is somehow f hat why does this work this is exactly from the notion of the equivalent control exactly coming from the notion of the equivalent control right if you look at this what is the equivalent control we say that the estimate is simply a low pass filter right and what is the low pass filter it's something like this right so here uh, the only thing we've done is we've not put in a low pass filter type term we've simply kept it at this b signum sigma right and this also works right so this is from the notion of equivalent control yeah you can actually estimate you can actually estimate the 
the quantity f okay you can actually estimate the quantity f and that's the whole sort of sort of uh, really really cool idea okay that's the whole uh, interesting interesting idea um, that of course you can always have a you know there's no problem if you have a minus uh, kw as well no problem right but this works right this is become this will be an estimator of f uh, and and that is essentially what you apply on top of your super twisting control and this will also compensate for the f itself okay this will also compensate for the f itself of course we are not specifying what b is so we'll just say b large enough yeah because if you remember here also this row was large enough to compensate for f f dot and so on and so forth okay so again we have shown these without proof so obviously um, you cannot say that this is a you know, complete rigorous treatment but the idea is the control uh, obtained from super twisting is going to be much nicer much cleaner right uh, than anything that you will get from uh, the typical classical sliding mode control okay um, the final sort of notion that i want to introduce is the notion of second order sliding mode right or higher order sliding mode you can always have higher and higher order sliding mode but i'm simply going to introduce uh, motivate this using the notion of a second order sliding mode all right so what is the notion earlier we constructed uh, sigma as x2 plus some cx1 okay and we said this is first order yeah because it uh, essentially it is uh, uh, what does it do it uh, sigma goes to zero finite time and slides on sigma equal to zero for infinite time right until both states actually go to zero right you remember the picture the picture was drawn probably in the first uh, page itself here first and second right right you 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 actually reach the sliding surface and then you keep sliding for infinite time until you reach here right so you are moving in a one dimensional surface for infinite time right and this is why this is a first order sliding mode right and this uh, what we say is when when it when um, so a behavior like this happens for a dynamical system that it starts to move or restrict itself to a um, one dimensional surface then we say that there is partial dynamical collapse right which means what that uh, you were a, you have started off with a second order system two state variables but you collapsed and started moving on a um, dimension one curve right? that's a partial dynamic collapse when you do second order sliding mode you actually do complete dynamical collapse so the target is complete dynamical collapse which means what implies x1 and x2 both go to zero in finite time okay and how does one do that one does that by choose non-linear sliding surface right what is this non-linear sliding surface it's pretty straightforward right i choose my sigma exactly motivated by the super twisting sort of a expression instead of x2 plus cx1 i take a c 
absolute x1 to the power half signum x1 right the purpose of having this uh, super twisting type expression right i am going to use this call this a super twisting type expression because this is exactly what we used in super twisting control right the purpose of having this is to make sure that this is a nice continuous function right otherwise if i just use c signums x1 then it's not continuous right and and that's uh, you cannot even categorize that as a surface right so as i said uh, purpose is to ensure continuous sigma right because if it is not continuous then sigma equal to 0 is not a surface right so therefore the idea of sliding mode sliding surface sliding manifold is not possible right if this is not continuous so it had has to at least be continuous and that is what this sort of a term does right now what do we know about this guy right what do we know about this guy right if sigma goes to 0 in finite time say then what do I have? I have x1 dot equals minus c absolute x1 to the power half signum x1, right? All I've done is substitute for x2 as x1 dot, right? Now, if I take v as half x1 squared, I know exactly that v dot is going to be minus uh, because we did this analysis right here, right? We did this analysis exactly for the similar case here, right? Instead of sigma, there will be just x1, right? So, I'm going to get v dot as minus c uh, x1 absolute value to the power 3 by 2. And that is just, uh, again, just pulling it out from here, that is just going to be this guy right minus 2 to the power 3 fourth c v to the power 3 fourth right? and therefore what do you have implies x1 goes to 0 in finite time right? because obviously this is less than 1 right so that's exactly the condition right that v dot has to be some uh, negative constant multiplied by v to the power alpha where alpha is less than 1 and that's exactly the finite time convergence condition therefore x1 goes to 0 in finite time and x2 is simply x1 dot and therefore x2 also goes to 0 in finite time right and so we have what we we will have what we want right this is what does it mean we will have finite time uh, collapse right you will have complete dynamical collapse because in implies have complete dynamical collapse right why because we um ensure that both states go to zero in finite time yeah and stay there right so it's not sliding on a one dimensional surface it, it goes to a zero dimensional surface which is origin right goes to origin in finite time and we are done right and we are done right so that's the very interesting notion now what is it that we need to remember uh, we need to of course find out uh, what u to use for sigma going to zero in finite time right that's an important question what would be the control right now if you see um, if i try to use v equal to sigma square to arrive at a control i'm going to get pretty complicated things right because i have to take derivative of this guy and all that I have to take the derivative of this guy and all that right because if i so sigma dot 
complicated not that it's not possible but yeah it's fairly complicated the uh, it's fairly complicated right because uh, you, once i in order to do sigma sigma dot i'll have to take derivative of this guy right uh, uh, so however it is well understood that uh, u equal to again minus rho signum sigma works for large sigma okay but again with a lot of chattering right this control also will have a lot of chattering okay so notice that this looks uh, similar to before but actually it's different because sigma itself is different right okay but again this control like i said before also has a decent bit of chattering right even though uh, you have sliding your smooth your non-linear sliding surface but the point is only the sliding surface is non-linear the fact that if you go across it this way or that way across even a non-linear sliding surface your control is still jumping right then the other option is of course uh, you can or use super twisting yeah so whatever be the order of the sliding mode uh, the or the sliding uh, you can always switch to a super twisting control right because then you get rid of the chattering issue uh, in a very very nice and efficient way right because this is definitely going to jump across the sliding surface right even if the sliding surface is linear non-linear it doesn't matter um, it's still going to jump it is still going to move along around it and if it moves around across it it's the control is going to jump and therefore there's going to be high frequency chatter on the other hand the super twisting control because it's not going to be rho signum sig sigma it is going to be something like um, minus rho uh, sigma to the power half signum sigma yeah we are going to have a much more smoother performance okay and that's sort of what you're looking for all right um, so that's sort of all we wanted to discuss in sliding mode control we did first order sliding mode we did second order sliding mode we sort of understood how using the notion of equivalent control you can actually obtain the value of the disturbance itself we understood the limitations in the in the sense that there is a lot of uh, boundedness uniform boundedness assumptions we understood that there is chattering issues that we need to resolve uh, super twisting control is one of the really really cool developments in sliding mode control area which uh, actually gets rid of uh, chattering very efficiently right um, and this can be combined with uh, the function the disturbance determination scheme to actually get um, uh, to the sliding surface yeah so of course we did most of this without proof and with a very nice uh, double integrator example things are significantly more complicated if you do um, uh, more elaborate things for more general systems and of course uh, there is enough literature and books and texts uh, in this uh, area uh, so i have particularly been uh, referring to the um, book by yuri stessel stessel uh, and others yeah uh, on sliding mode control yeah there is quite a few authors all the uh, most of the pretty uh, heavy lifters in the area are uh, sort of co-authors in this book and so it's one of the better written books most of the material that we've covered is from the first chapter yeah and so as you can imagine this is what you've covered is literally just the first chapter and introduction so sliding mode and uh, there is so much more uh, than this in in sliding mode control yeah that we have not actually covered here um, so that brings us to the end of this NPTEL course i really really hope that you uh, enjoy uh, learning through this course and i also really hope that some of what you learned um, ends up being useful for you uh, in the real world and uh, i would be very happy to hear 
here and on YouTube. Um, you know, uh, please tag me. Uh, please tag the course on your social network pages. And uh, I mean, so that more and more people can actually take the course, learn from the course. Um, and there is more interest in the topic in general. Yeah. So um, that's all from me. Uh, thank you so much again.